I'm pleased to join you for this important discussion on how our conventions can work better together to boost food security. Let's begin with the facts. First, that our food production systems, from the science behind it, from sea to soil and beyond, is an incredible human achievement and has helped fuel the progress and longevity of our species. Second, that farmers throughout the world and all involved in the food production cycle, through to distribution and waste, are to be commended for their ongoing efforts to feed this planet. Yet the challenges of trying to feed approximately 8 billion people has residual impacts, such as significant contributions to greenhouse gases, increased deforestation, and biodiversity loss. These numbers show that the production, delivery, and consumption of food can lead to long-term environmental damage. This damage depletes our natural resources, specifically the soil, which in turn impacts our ability to produce more food. Clearly, this is not sustainable. Indeed, the latest State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World report shows that the world is not on track to achieve zero hunger by 2030. If current trends persist, SDG 2 will be missed by a margin of nearly 660 million people. We are not properly managing the food we need to produce, and what we are producing is having a detrimental impact on the environment and the climate. Clearly, transforming the food production system is critical. In September, the UN Food Systems Summit provided global leaders with the opportunity to discuss the way the world produces, distributes, and consumes food. The Climate Resilient Development Pathways Coalition stressed the need for enhanced efforts towards confronting the interlinkages between climate, conflict, and COVID-19 to build more resilient food systems. UN Climate Change has also offered several ideas to the UN Food Systems Summit that are in line with our process. For example, one of the key pathways of our Resilience Frontiers Initiative is all about mainstreaming regenerative agriculture, taking a conservation and rehabilitation approach to food and farming systems. Our integrated framework concentrates on providing a systemic approach to national adaptation plans and better integrating them with the SDGs process. And the Coronivia joint work on agriculture addresses vulnerabilities of agriculture to climate change and approaches to addressing food security. From a bigger picture perspective, changing how we use land and water is vital to achieve global food security. To do that, we must protect what we have, recover what has been lost, and keep ecosystems intact through sustainable management practices. That's a tall order and we don't have a moment to lose. COP26 offers a key opportunity to make progress, a milestone event that is now only a few weeks away. In Glasgow, nations must continue stepping up their climate action if we are to have any hope of improving our food output and environmental footprint. To that end, nations will need to work much closer together on food security and climate change. For example, through the Coronivia Joint Work on Agriculture, which will be reporting about its work to COP26 in November. We also need commitments by parties to deliver more ambitious NDCs that will reduce emissions as rapidly as possible, as well as long-term strategies that will get us to climate neutrality by 2050. And at least 50% of climate finance must be allocated to adaptation and resilience measures. Colleagues, 
food security and the health and stability of our climate are closely tied. More sustainable and resilient food production, consumption and distribution processes are inevitably better for the climate. In turn, a strong climate system reinforces more sustainable food systems that provide for food security and, of course, a healthier planet. There is no better example than where our three conventions intersect. Climate resilient and sustainable agricultural systems benefit from biodiversity conservation and combating desertification. They also contribute to the protection, maintenance and restoration of ecosystem. I am pleased that this relationship between the conventions has grown stronger over the past few years. This only makes sense as our conventions share one goal in common, building a sustainable cycle of natural wealth to protect human health and all life on this planet. But we must continue to do more together. I assure you that UN Climate Change will continue working to strengthen these ties, especially in this period in which we have our three COPs, to continue making progress towards this goal, which will, among other benefits, significantly boost food security. Thank you.